Hello YouTube, it's Cave Dweller 1959. I want to welcome you to my cave. My corner of my cave anyway. My workbench. Spent a lot of time here. Dinking around, making things, building things, done so for 20 years of living here. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some knives today. Some of the equipment in future videos I'm going to be shooting on the stuff that I make these knives with. Unlike some stuff out there, I don't have belt sanders. I don't have any really power equipment of any real magnitude. Most of this is done by hand. A couple little electronics right there in the corner. I just showed you a little uh, drill press, miter saw, scroll saw. Save you a lot of work. They don't take up hardly any room. They're relatively cheap to buy. Most of what I'm looking at right here is stocked in maple. I start talking maple and the flash. I want to show you this piece right here. If I can get in on it. When you roll maple in light, you can see that. I don't know if that's coming across very good. Anybody that's dealt with maple, they know what I'm talking about. Those of you that haven't, I'm hoping you can see that. That flash, that curl in there is what gives maple the desirability that it has. All these, like I said, most of these are stocked in maple. Uh, all but one, matter of fact. I'm going to show you a little bit of difference between the maples. These two in particular come out of the exact same piece of wood. One of them, highly figured, and the curl just jumps. You can see it dance in the light. That's done. It takes an acid to do that. Not very much. There's different kinds on the market. I'm going to show you some super easy ones in the next few weeks. This one is out of the same piece of wood. There was no acid applied to it. Good looking piece of wood. Not as good looking as that one though. That is stained with a uh, Laurel Mountain Forge Lancaster Maple it's called. What I've really gotten into, what I really want to show you, acid, acid etching on the blades. So right now I'm going to shut this thing off. I'm going to go in another room where i got better light to show the blades that shine and reflect light really bad and it's hard to take pictures of. Hey YouTube, got the camera set up in a better light situation. I'm going to talk to you about the first four or five knives I've done. Acid etching. Not so much into maple. We'll talk about that later maybe. Like most people that got into etching acid, I probably started with the L pocket folder right there. Uh, this is a Gerber Air Ranger, I believe. Relatively inexpensive knife. I had no set ideas on pattern, whatnot. I just put some uh, the fingernail polish on it, dipped her in the solution, pulled it out, cleaned it up. Thought, oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Kind of cool little hobby. Doesn't take a lot of money. Doesn't take a lot of space. The second knife I did. I took the work to show it off. Guy bought it from me. It's almost identical to this one. Of course, there's no two things when you start doing this. You can't do it the exact same way twice. Started with a flame pattern. Got way carried away, but I got that much canvas to work with. Might as well use it up. This one in particular, the next four knives are Russell Green River. Next to Russell Cutlery Company. Don't forget your maker's mark. Always put your mark. It's your knife. Make it your knife. Russell Green River. This is a buffalo skinner. The Green River knife works. The history goes back, to the best of my research, 19, 1834. Excuse me. 1834. These things have been in production ever since. I'm going to go off and say they have passed the test of time. High carbon steel very very good material. I have them dulled up for this videos and such when I work on them. A few licks on a steel these things are just like razor blade shave and sharp and they maintain that edge. None of these knives I have they're all working knives. They're not closet queens they're not for collecting. They are my day to day. Not so much this one I do use it for different things here and there not as much as the next ones. This guy here, 
is a Russell Green River called the six inch boning knife. In a kitchen, that's as good a knife as you can get. Stainless steel is okay. I'll take high carbon any day of the week. Like I talked about acid and staining, it takes a little acid to bring that out. But we're talking about acid etching. All I did on this one, I wanted to put my maker mark on there. There it is. That is a good knife. No kitchen is complete without a few of these. I've got four of them. Had them for about 15 years now. Primo, primo quality blade. This next one, another six inch boning knife. This one is stained in maple. Stained maple. Uh, technique used several hundred years, I'm going to say. The 1700s, they were already using it on high quality maple gun stocks called Aquafortis. Makes a gorgeous, gorgeous blank. I wanted to make this knife look like it was twice as old as I am. And I'm about as old as dirt. I put a vine pattern on it. Came out pretty good. I don't know how that's showing up on the uh, camera here. Acid etched rather well. Maker mark. I put that in with a electricity. I burned it in to begin with and I got done. I chipped out just a little bit around the edges and I burned it a little more. Gives it looked like uh, something that was done there a long time ago and just through normal wear, tear, rust, whatnot, it's washing out. Worked rather well. Does not look like a new knife by any stretch. Looks like it's been around forever and a day. But still, Russell Green River. These knives been in production, like I said, 1834, something to that effect. These are the knives of people when they moved west of the Mississippi. This is the kind of blades they went. This one here is called the Green River Classic. It is my hunting knife. When I grab the deer rifle, put on my backpack, this knife is in it. I've had this for several, several years. It's stocked in Brazilian rosewood. Very hard, very dense, great handle material. Uh, you can't hardly see it. Kind of a red and it's got blue, purple, black streaks running through it. Gorgeous piece of wood. But we're not talking wood, we're talking acid etching. When was the last time you saw something like that? You ever been across the prairie, you saw a lightning storm starting a grass on fire, scare the hell right out of you. You got an old dead buffalo laying out there, the skull from the last go around. So this is my hunting knife. When I go hunting, gotta have the spirit of the best. So I go with the ultimate bushmaster. The guy that had to hunt for a living. He's gonna be eating himself some elk steaks tonight. In case you haven't figured out what my maker mark is, it's pretty obvious. I put him big on here. This is my knife. It's in my pack. That guy hunted for a living. If he wasn't good at it, he probably wasn't around very long. They walked around the earth for a couple hundred thousand years, if not longer. That's acid etching. This cave dweller. 1959. Thank you much. Appreciate you watching.